Welcome to another episode of DrivenMavens.com and we're going to talk about painting trains. So let's go. It's a little bit of a switch from drawing cars or painting cars, uh, what have you, but uh, this is really in line with uh, just getting some practice in and just starting to interpret the uh, pictures or any kind of reference material. It's always good for you to keep an active reference photograph file uh, that you can pull off of that you can just try to copy the image and try to replicate what it is that you see here. So we're going to go through another quick exercise here. I can't quite remember how long it took me to do this painting but it was probably around 45 minutes or something like that. So the first thing we're going to do as you've seen here I've gone ahead and put in a a warm yellow ochre-ish background probably a little bit brighter than yellow ochre but all I'm trying to do right now is to identify the shapes. And this is uh, pretty common uh, to people who are, when you start to practice and get into painting, what you start to see is identify the objects in the photographs so as just mere collection of shapes and forms. Because what happens when you do it that way and you break them down to just uh, these kind of shapes is that it takes away a little bit of that intimidation factor to really understand what it is that you're trying to do uh, and to relate it as well you know this is a, uh, a diesel engine or a steam engine or something like that if you can just break it down to what it is that you're seeing then yeah, you're not going to be worried about those details so the first step in this process is for you to just block in the shapes that you see so notice what you're seeing is that just right uh, where the track is um, and here I am, I'm, I'm also kind of estimating what my where my perspective is going to be and I'm just getting into the habit of trying to relate these shapes to the given space. So my canvas size is more or less uh, close to uh, the photographic image here and the image I got, uh, I got this uh, <laughs> beautiful image here from uh, some website here um, I have a lot of reference material for, for trains and just very emotive uh, pictures to pull off of because they've got such uh, wonderful colors and uh, a really nice contrast as you can see you've got the the nice uh, dusk setting in the background and you've got the silhouette of the train that really pops out off of the background so it's, it's really a nice thing to kind of play off of so here I'm just trying to eyeball the perspective and what's nice is that uh, as you go through this kind of stage is you, you start to zoom out of that picture which is what I've got here and you're just trying to kind of estimate. This is a little bit difficult when you start to begin. You know, I've got quite a bit of experience with drawing in perspective so I know where my lines more or less need to go. It's not completely accurate, but uh, as long as it's not, you know, as long as we want to show that we've got convergence to the uh, vanishing point, uh, we're, we're fine here. Now you can see this is very uh, quick. It's very rough. It's very dirty. Uh, I have sped up the video uh, just in order to save time and to make sure that we are under a 10 minute time frame here. So we don't keep you on the internet here for too long so you have other better things to do. And now all I'm doing is is starting to try to match the colors. Now I'm not using even the color picker. What I'm doing here is trying to eyeball what it is that I see and I'm just carefully adjusting as I go. I'm adding some, you know, lighter tones and things to pop out uh, certain aspects here. Whatever it is that I'm seeing, and and notice what I'm using is I'm not using any special brushes. All this is is just a default round brush in Photoshop. There's a setting under the brush uh, a setting tool called transfer button. Uh, if anyone has uh, purchased my DVD set, this explains the you know how to set up your brushes from scratch and uh, what kind of effects that you get and what are the, uh, the properties of the brushes. That's something that's really nice about Photoshop is the tweaking the amount of 
settings that you can tweak and a lot of the digital artists and painters uh, Photoshop has come such a uh, long way with being able to give you uh, give digital digital artists and designers tools that they can use to uh, really customize their brushes now what I've done is I've sort of flattened that brush you can look at the brush sizes there's that transfer button right there that you can see that's been clicked uh, on I flattened that brush so I get kind of like a uh, kind of like a palette knife type of thing palette knife or I guess uh, just a flat brush I suppose now I'm just sort of texturizing everything just indicating details now you know now that I've got enough uh, colors on my palette I'm able to go in and literally just pick off of the uh, the color scheme off of the the background and now I can just sort of add and blend in those colors onto the painting so again we're just going to indicate the details this is you know I I can't stress doing exercises like this enough because you're not trying to do anything finished you're just trying to practice and just get used to the the digital tools and just get used to visualizing the forms here it's quite a bit of a jump here I know I, I can recognize that but in order to save a little bit of time what I really want to drive home with this is just you it's just the fact that you understand what the technique is and how to use this technique you know now I've zoomed out you can see how everything starts to come together a little bit you're able to now relate if you just if you squint your eyes and blur both pictures you know hopefully what you'll end up seeing is some similarities the graphical similarities again it's not completely perfect but you know all you're trying to do is to get uh, pretty close to the picture and, and you just have to keep working it through just spend a little bit more time and and don't put any time constraints if you're in, in school if you're in college or oh heck you know even if you're you know, retired or something this is just a nice exercise to go through and just uh, spend some time on. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode, and we'll see you here next time on DrivenMavens.com. Have a good one.